don't know why the black line is there. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to get into the rest of this first sentence. I have just a couple things to say. I wouldn't get upset at people playing poorly. Lie. Incorrect. hundred percent false. Um, if he can't admit to that, that's a problem. I would even mention this after scrims if needed to, he would mention that he wasn't upset at them playing poorly. So then that means he was doing some action that he felt like would give off that vibe. Second problem. I would get upset at people if they played poorly and weren't trying to correct it. Everyone is... Okay. I'm super confused. The th Alright, Cyclone is the one person who honestly very rarely makes a mistake. And if he does make a mistake, it's usually like him trying to 1v5 because he's fucking 10 levels ahead of them and he knows it. But me... Oceans and Mike, like I want people to tell me what I'm doing wrong. I've I've had I've talked to Allied, I've talked to a bunch of people. Like, tell me, tell me. Oceans is the exact same way as me. Mike is even more so. If someone can tell me what I'm doing wrong, I might argue with you to try to get the point across, like where my mindset is and where his is. But 100%, we are always trying to correct our mistakes. This is like, the this is, this makes no fucking sense. I would get upset at people if they played poorly and weren't trying to correct it. Now, granted, I, I will admit, I get mad I when we're not <laughs> fixing things even though we're trying to. I get frustrated. I tell people that when they join the team, and I tell them if I ever say something to not take it to heart because it's just the type of person I am, and the next day I'll more than likely apologize or like have something else to say about it, but I get very frustrated. 100% can admit to that. I don't know why stealth can't. Because this is this whole this is completely inaccurate, hundred percent. I mean, I got some fucking fluffy on my eye or some shit. Thank you for that sub, by the way, Colton. All right, second paragraph. Wait, hold on. Now he's saying, hold on. I love Oceans of Death, but he's not complacent with shit. He's always trying new things. I don't understand the sentence. I would get upset if he had a bad game and was complacent with it. So that's just him assuming he knows what Ocean's thought process was. Now, the way I've, I've talked to Oceans about the game, he always wants stuff corrected. Like, he wants to try new things, he wants uh, advice, he wants fucking sh different strategies to be shown his way, thrown his way. So this makes no fucking sense to me. I'm just waiting for him to get to me, because I already know I play like shit, so that'll be fun. He, Alright, he wouldn't get upset during LAN game. Truth. This is true. He ne I never remember him being upset, like, verbally during a LAN game. Correct. See? But now he's admitting that he was upset in some scrims. So he went from, I wouldn't get upset, I wouldn't even mention it until afterwards, and now he's saying, he did do it in scrims, he did get upset. Alright, let's just get that across. So he was getting upset, but he wasn't, but he was, but he wasn't, but he was, but he wasn't. <clears throat> I was told growing up that it isn't practice that makes perfect, but perfect practice that makes perfect. You can't be perfect. There is no perfect. Nobody's perfect. Energy's not perfect. No person in any sport and anything is perfect. So that's a stupid ass sentence. A lot of my teammates would show up late for scrims. People would show up like five or ten minutes late because the other team showed up five or ten minutes late. That's a stand in smite. Nobody is on time. So this is just irrelevant information that is taken out of context. Also, if you are performing poorly, then it's up to you to communicate with your team about how we can all win. If you're performing poorly, you need your team to help you figure it out. 
if I knew what I was doing wrong, I wouldn't need to tell you. I would fucking fix it, Stealth. This is your problem. You don't understand the game at a real level. Also, also, if you're performing poorly, then it's up to you to communicate with your team about how you can win. What the fuck? A team is supposed to help each other, not have the person who's fucking up know how to fix it. That makes no fucking sense. Oceans wouldn't talk to anybody. That's incorrect. He would talk to me all the time. He would talk to Mike every once in a while. He would talk to Cyclone every once in a while. He just wouldn't talk to you because you didn't help anybody, Stealth. You helped nobody but yourself. Look at all your interviews. All you fucking do is talk about how much damage you did. No one gives a fuck. You're a great player. We understand that. But it's a team game. That's your problem. Team game. It's not about you. It's about everybody. Oh, fuck. Not during the game nor after. Also incorrect. I would talk to Oceans all the time. Talk to him at Worlds like a hundred times about this shit. I've got your back. <laughs> Rip Max 47 thank you for the sub, brother. It struck me as a person who was complacent. Yet Oceans didn't, or Stealth didn't have a conversation with Oceans about the whole issue. See, this is another problem. You couldn't even communicate with your teammate. I wanted as much good practice as we could get. You don't have to win every game. Granted, I love winning scrims. Makes me feel like we're doing well. But you don't have to win every game to have good practice. <clears throat> In conclusion, I think too many people get hurt feeling... What the fuck? I don't create a toxic environment during SBL games. That's true. Or important matches. So what is your version of important matches? Because every scrim is important to me. This is true. This makes no sense. I get upset when people don't take practice seriously. Practice is when you improve as a team style, not by yourself. It's not always about the performance of the individual. It's about the team figuring out how to play around it or to make them pick them up. It's pretty much that simple. Too many people haven't played any sports games. Like, this is the mindset of somebody who should be playing a single player game or a fucking like StarCraft or some shit. He did apologize sometimes after getting upset. Sometimes. I don't know that he did it with the new roster. He did do it with Venunu and Cope. A couple times. And this was never because we weren't giving it our all. I'm actually getting AIDS from this. He didn't explain anything. He threw out some bullshit and tried to cover his ass. Like, it's, I, I can go through this and call myself out while also calling himself out. He talked about showing up late for scrims. I would purposely show up 5 to 10 minutes late. I still do because other teams usually don't show up for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, they're always late, so it's pretty standard. So it got to a point where, like, if I have dinner, especially when I was going to school, I would get home and eat dinner and try to rush and be on for scrims. It got to the point where I realized, why was I rushing? I'd show up later. Uh, Stealth was always there 5 minutes early because he wasn't didn't have anything to do, which is fine. That's great. If he, he could have showed up late and no one would have been mad. Nobody was upset at each other except for him, I guess, apparently. The problem with the old roster with Ven and Cope was he had the same attitude, but I also had a poor attitude, so I it wasn't helping. Back. Hey, week three in. I've loved being a part of the Week Nation the past five months, and I'm excited to see how you and Alge will do in S4 with whoever you pick up for mid lane. <sighs> Thank you very much for the support, Ace. You're God, man. All right, I'm done with the going over. That that was a terrible twit longer. I want to make one, and I want to go through everyone, like, like including myself, I want to go through everyone's flaws and good things, just so everyone knows, like, <laughs> the inner workings of the team, but there's no way I can accurately depict all of that information. I don't understand. I just don't understand it. I don't know. I can get the whole 
he thought Oceans was complacent, but if you've had a conversation with Oceans, like a real conversation, then you know he's not complacent. Can I read through PBMs and explain more? Sure. Why not? Um, let me find Mike. Uh, hold on one second. I haven't actually read through this whole thing. I like skimmed through it before he put it up. Um, is this accurate? Yeah, it is. All right. Boom. All right. I'm going to try to like see this from MLC's point of view too here. If I can, it might be kind of difficult, but I'm going to try. I'll let you guys read it. I'm not going to read it out loud. It's too much reading. This is true. The four of us uh, agreed that we... Well, all right. So he's he's basically saying we agreed we'd stay together. Uh, that's the idea as of right now. None of us want to play with other people. We're, we're happy with each other. We've had a lot of talks to make sure everyone's ready to just be open about shit. So hopefully that continues. MLC's attitude in game was constantly detrimental to our team. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down real quick. Um, what the fuck is going on? I've got your back. My stream broke. <laughs> oh, there we go. My stream broke. It didn't break, but I broke. Chaos, thank you for the sub, brother. Okay, so constantly detrimental. He, this is probably most of you took it as he's always got a bad attitude all the time, every five seconds. That's not the case. Um. It was the idea that whenever anything was going wrong, it was always, was the attitude going to come up? It affected some people consistently because, like, it would carry over. So, like, if he had a bad attitude the night before, the next night, it would make people not, certain people not want to scrim um, or not want to talk or not want to be as involved. Uh, myself included at one point. Like, that's not me putting it on other people. I've, I, I understand it because I can be, I can have a bad attitude sometimes. I need somebody to keep me in check or to just, like, be able to bring up the positivity of a team. That's one thing that me and Incont worked well together when he was really like playing competitively. He's really good at being positive, uh, even when things are down. And I can do that pretty well in land. I can't do that in scrims. It's something I, I struggle with. So con consistently, need, you guys need to know like it's not him doing it every single game. He has a bad attitude. It's just the, the, the bad attitude carrying over and always being present, the idea that it was there. Hey, Tedder, I can make room. Yes, sir. Scrims did go smooth at first. Uh, prep for regionals where ha where we had to experience stealth passive. So stealth, his uh, attitude is it is passive aggressive. He'll never say you're bad or this or that, but he'll always say he had the most damage in the game or this or that. So that's very accurate. Now this is not me saying I don't have me I don't have an attitude or Mike can't have an attitude. Sometimes everyone can have an attitude. Sometimes. Whenever we scrim luminosity, stealth would routinely call out people in a manner that isn't helpful for any misplays. This is very true. Uh, for some reason against LG, well, I mean, not for some reason. It's his former team teammates. He always wanted to show up um, Barra and Jeff. Kind of like, you kicked me and it was a mistake. And that's, I mean, you, you got to let it go. Like, I was kicked off Envy and when I played them, I wanted to beat them, but I wanted to beat them just like I wanted to beat anybody else. It never made me change my attitude or change anything else. So this is just a poor outlook for stealth that hopefully it's something he can work on over time. I feel like eventually he will, but uh, it, it's taken longer than it really should have. He would say things such as Barra is just doing so much more than Oceans. That's accurate. If we want to win, then you just need to do what he is doing. Accurate. This is a major problem with uh, the outlook everyone wanted from the team. Um... So it's awesome that you can realize that there's a problem. Like, obviously, Stealth realized something was going wrong, but he was putting it all on Oceans rather than trying to help Oceans figure it out, trying to help himself and the team figure out why Barrow was able to do what he was doing. Because it's not just Oceans getting beat. It's not just Oceans' problem. If anyone on the team has a problem, it instantly becomes the team's problem. There's always ways around it. There's always ways to do other things, like, uh, say, I'm so used to camping the soul lane, right? Well, I could instantly just become more pressure on the duo lane, but then that snowballs. Everybody needs to shift around that, and that's something that I don't think Stealth realized uh, could be done, and that's a problem, was his game knowledge just seemed to be lacking. Like, if we want to win, we need to do what exactly what someone else is doing. That's not 
ever a good mindset. It's why did this go wrong? How can we fix it? Um, how can we help Oceans? How can we help the team figure that out? Pretty straightforward. You never really got being kicked over. Uh, it's obvious he's still not over being kicked by C9. Understandable. Getting stick kicked sucks. I was on AFK for a year and got kicked. But I mean, it's just something you have to deal with. It's a fucking job. <clears throat> oh, what is this video? <laughs> this is this is such a minor thing, but this was so annoying. So Thoth is Stealth's favorite god, I think, or at least at the time it was. Um, it says it the, the basically his whole play style was he he had to carry, he had to do all the damage. Um, it was all in his mind about him. Um, so this is saying he would zone me and Mike all the time from ways, and with Thoth you can clear from a mile away. I can't tell you how many times in real games and in scrims that I did not get the Archer XP. And when you don't get Archer XP for fucking 10 minutes straight, it makes you want to blow your brains out. Um, I'm going to click on this video. Let me, I don't want it to fucking pop up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't do this enough. All right, here we go. Here, I'll leave it up. We're good. Thoth's value and also well we can ever hit a Thor I'll answer the second part for we can know and then the Thoth one is up to still I mean the game against Latin America I did 15,000 more player damage than the next player damage guy which was on their team and I went all right hold on what, what was this question Ethan did you overestimate Thoth's value and did also you overestimate Thoth's, Thoth's value that's a simple no, we did not. We practiced with we practiced with it a lot, and we did well with it a lot. When you guys ask me like, "How is Thor doing this and that?" Um, I'm not gonna say I'm the reason Thor is working, or I'm the reason it's not working, or I'm the reason Mercury worked. It's a terrible that mindset is terrible, absolutely terrible. Anyway, we're past that. Oh, let me see what this is. I don't know what this is. Hey, I beat Ladam just fine. Went 4-1 and one and top damage by over 15k. Don't yell at me. How, uh, <laughs> if you're part of a team, if you guys are part of, of something, anything, for work, school, business, whatever, do you want somebody in your group or your team to say they beat Ladam, meaning the other four people on their team didn't do anything and it's all their fault? Do you think that's a good team outlook? Especially on a team you're trying to stick with, that doesn't. That's a, that's it's, it's awesome. Stealth played well. Everyone can see when someone plays well. But if your team didn't win, you didn't play well enough, or you didn't do your job. All right. The other main issue we felt was a lacking of understanding of everyone else's roles. Uh, he would often say things such as, "Every game, their ADC goes to Gold Fury, pulls the Gold Fury, tells the Solar Inner to teleport to the Gold Fury to hog it, and they just get gold for free." I don't get why we aren't doing that. It should go without saying that this is just this just isn't how the game works. These plays were being made because teams would either already have a lead or would have a lane pressure in duo lane and mid lane, which allows for you to group for gold furies more proactively. So basically, we didn't we still we don't believe that stealth could break a game down as to why X led to Y led to Z. Um, he couldn't make the connection, or he couldn't at least express um how to fix it or why it was happening uh, it just felt as though mlc would look over at everyone but himself and that type of attitude is never productive for a team that's the big issue here long-term productive for a team i need someone to tell me i'm doing something wrong uh if they have an idea i need them to be able to give me ideas of what we could do differently or i can do differently like i know the game pretty well but i sure as hell don't know everything and i'm obviously not the best mechanical player so I need to get my advantages elsewhere from strategy, from, from planning, from other shit. That's where I get my advantage as a player and being able to just keep people up and going with whatever strategy. That's what I do. If I have someone pushing me in the mid lane, it's way easier for me to do that. It's way easier for me to excel uh, with someone who couldn't be productive and, and do that stuff for a long-term goal. That was an issue. I got another fucking fluffy on my So many fluffies. <clears throat> Even if he made a blatant mechanical or positioning error, it was near impossible to bring it up without deflection. <laughs> so one time, 
One time he dashed in on Izanami in a scrim, and he died for it, and he 100% tried to blame Mike for not peeling. And it was very simple for him to say, that was my bad, I shouldn't have dashed in. But he, like, Mike, Mike was like, what are you talking, like, Mike's like, what do you mean, how is that my fault? Uh, he was playing, like, Guan Yu or something. First of all, how the fuck do you peel on Guan Yu? Second of all, it was just like, it's okay, you fucked up stealth, just, just say you fucked up. Just don't even say anything. Just be like, my bad. I don't know. It, it, that would happen far too all. Like, he didn't make mechanical errors all the time. But it was pretty much any time that did happen, there was always... It's kind of like when I stream and I'm joking around with my teammates and I'm like, Mindy, that was your fault. I was fucking this. Or where was my Geb shield, even though I know Treadstone gave Geb shield to somewhere else. Uh, it was like that, but in a scrim for him. It was weird. This is just not something we wanted to be a part of the team in the long term as scrims are for improvement, not for winning or losing. We didn't feel MLC was on the same page. Pretty accurate. The main reason for posting this aside from explaining our perspective is to point out some of the, what the fuck, uh, some of the actions, blah, 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 blah. At some point, it just gets to where it's beyond repair and really rubs you the wrong way, especially when your entire team knows you asked LG for a mid tryout and then tweet this. So here's another big issue for you guys, or for uh, for me, uh, me specifically. Um, I usually trust the people I'm playing with pretty well. Uh, I understand people have to make decisions and shit, but like, you can't fucking ask LG for a tryout. We we had people show like we know he asked for a tryout. This was before Worlds. This was before we played at Worlds. Asked for a tryout, and then tweeted, after an evening of thinking, I'm proud of how the whole team played. I think we can only improve if we stick together and learn. So obviously, he was either being two-faced or just trying to have a backup plan. So if he didn't make LG, he was still fronting that he wanted to be on ALG and we could grow. So that's a pro. Like, you can't do that. If you're going to try out for another team, just say, hey, I want to try out for another team. It's okay. You're allowed to leave. You're allowed to want to leave. You don't, like, it's the way it is. It's all right. It's acceptable. But you can't fucking ask for a, a tryout and also tweet the same thing the same week. It doesn't make any sense. See, I knew about this. I knew about him asking for this before we played. As soon as I got to Worlds, I knew about, about this happening. Um, so when he was tweeting this shit like we should stick together, in my head, I knew four of us would stick together. I wasn't sure what was happening to him. But now you all know. You know our reasoning. Once again, this doesn't mean none of us, none of the four of us were not at fault. It doesn't mean we didn't do anything wrong, but it means the four of us feel we could grow without stealth being a part of it. We feel like we can get over our flaws, our issues, our problems, all that shit um, with a different mid laner. Granted, we have to find that mid laner. Hopefully we find them sooner rather than later. Um, pretty simple. Last sentence. People will probably hate us for this, but as a team, we just feel some things just should be said and made public knowledge. So... At first, I wanted everything to be kind of like ALG dealt with it. ALG's thing, like ALG just released him and we can move on. But as other information came to light, um, mainly talk from other people and what they were hearing from certain people, it became very, very important that we expressed our thoughts, whether that made people like stealth more or hate us, whatever, whatever it ended up being. We didn't really care. We just felt like these three things needed to be expressed in the best way possible. Once again, this doesn't mean I have nothing wrong with me. That doesn't mean I wasn't a part of the problem. It doesn't mean I don't need to improve. I sure as hell need to improve a fuck ton. But I can tell you guys that. And Stealth needs to get to a point where he can tell you guys that he's not a great team player and he needs to work on that. Simple as that. That's the whole twit longer broken down between his and ours. Now I can queue. And let me get Jay Tedder in here. Um... Swamp, you've been in a little while, so I'm going to swap you out for J-Tutter. I love you. I'm not mad at you. We're going to work on your ADC, if you can hear me. Working on that shit. <clears throat> I hope we get the, the opportunity to grow as a team, too. I really want this year to just be like about improvement. Honestly, I do. I want people to be able to sit down and be like, look, you can't do this. You fucking suck. We can so do this instead. And I'd be like, hell yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe not in those words because I might get a little upset, but, but yeah. 
You want to learn how to legit solo? Bro, <laughs> I can't really help you with solo because I don't know the, the matchup. That's the biggest issue. Remember the BM war me and Omega had in rank? Yeah, I remember. That was fun. Did you know while making those... Shit. Where'd it go? Did you know while making those videos for ALG, the MLC, I knew it was more than likely that we wouldn't be with MLC this, this season coming up. <clears throat> Can I explain the deal with Omega? Um, I hated Omega for breaking apart uh, Envy. He basically came in and manipulated Cyclone and Kiki, and everyone kind of respected him. And it was that was a poor choice by myself and everyone else. Uh, so I didn't like him then. And then he started to shit talk and was like, nice smite career weekend because I wasn't on a team anymore. And then I came back into the SBL and I shit on him. And then he ran AF or Envy even more into the ground. And then he quit on the team. He just, on the spot, just disappeared. Um, he just went to the owner and said, I'm not playing anymore. So he's a shitty person, a bad human being. And he's just an asshole. And I can compete like... In terms of, I can also be an asshole if I want to. So I, I find, I find it fun and enjoyable and good for the community for me to kind of put him in his place. And I think he's really upset that I made it to Worlds while he's trying to make an Xbox team, and the Xbox team he's trying to make won't play with him because he can't scrim enough and they think he sucks. <laughs>